we're joined here by Amy Sheetreets out of Israel, out of Haifa, Israel. And uh, Amy, kind of update us on what's going on over there. Okay, you're talking about the 150 that were captured. That was yesterday, and it looks like there are some rumors that they might have just surrendered themselves. Um, but there are pictures on the internet of them being in their bloomies and barefoot, which has been going all over the internet. I saw, um, I saw that. And, you know, now that is typical. I mean, I was in the military myself. When you actually capture uh, soldiers, in order to make sure they don't have any explosives on them as a big group is surrendering, you know, you don't want the next thing you know, they're, they're, they're detonate a bomb. And so in the military, what we would do is we would make them completely disrobe down to their underwear only. And that was it. Uh, that way you could tell there's no bombs or anything stra strapped to them. Then you bring them out, then you kneel them down, and then you take them. And, and I saw the picture as well. Uh, so I'm sure that was humiliating for them, but, uh, but victory for Israel. But just imagine if 150 IDF soldiers were captured in Gaza, you wouldn't see them pictures. You wouldn't see pictures of them um, in their underwear you, and barefoot. You would see pictures of them slaughtered. That's exactly right. That's the difference, you know. And you know, <clears throat> you, you bring that up, Amy. And one thing that really bothers me, and as I watch the secular media, especially in the United States, even RT news, the Russian television. Uh, they really are exploiting the deaths of the civilians in this case, and yet they, they, they have no idea. There was one report that I heard that uh, some of the soldiers, some of the IDF soldiers, had reported back to their families uh, when they were able to, to, to speak back with their families uh, that the battle was so difficult because the Hamas militants would actually pick up a child, hold it in its arms while they would take and, and, and shoot at, uh, at, at the, as the Israelis. I mean, it, it puts, it, it compromises the whole situation. And yet at the same time, Hamas is quoted as saying that rockets are more valuable to them than children. Very, very sad. Um, the Israeli uh, IDF, they are in a dilemma because these are good moral guys that are out there in the field and they see a crying children, a child or children in the way and we normally divert our fire. We won't, we just won't fire. Um, that, that's a problem. Also today, more update is that um, it is um, not completely confirmed, but that IDF had struck on an UNRWA or UN uh, school today. Um, it has been known that Hamas was storing their missiles there, and it was even brought up to the UN and different governments. The governments gave them the missiles to the authorities, which the authorities are Hamas. So Hamas got their missiles back, and I don't know what was going on in that school, but um, it, it was struck. Um, I believe that it should have been evacuated. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was struck accidentally. But it looks like 15 deaths and um, over 100 wounded. Uh, so that does not look good for Israel. But we're doing the best that we can in, in, in trying not to compromise. And you know, the, exactly. And the one thing that, that really gets me when, because people really do not understand. I mean, Gaza is a very small strip of land. It's very dense in its population. And Israel sends leaflets, everything they can over the territory, telling these civilians to evacuate. But it's almost as if Hamas is intentionally not allowing the, them to evacuate uh, because they could go to another part of, of, the, of, of Gaza. I mean, Gaza is, you know, I don't know myself, probably was it maybe 40, 50 uh, kilometers long. That's just guesstimation off the top of my head. But uh, they don't have to be right there where the intense fighting is. But yet they, it's like they do it intentionally. Well, they are doing it intentionally. And they're even, if they have, uh, a couple of weeks ago when it was before the ground forces, they had told the population not to evacuate, but to stay there. Mom. to stay in the populated areas. So 
there are many that could evacuate. And I can understand when you're maybe pregnant or old, old people or disabled. Right, harder for them to evacuate. To evacuate. It would be very, very difficult, just like it would for any population. Um, and and our, our forces are in the south and in the north. And so there are some that are crying out in the Palestinian territories that they are to evacuate to. Also, you have these tunnels that are being um, uh, discovered underground in inside the cities, going out through the cities, through the fields, into Israel. And so also in those areas, you can't just go out into the field everywhere. There could be a tunnel. So exactly. it, it's very <clears throat> difficult for that population as well. But, you know, there, there are people that say, well, there are no innocents in Gaza. Nobody's innocent because they all voted for for Hamas, but not everyone voted for the Hamas. Right, right. And sometimes it may be under coercion. So, you, you know, one thing that came to my own thought in, in thinking about the situation with Gaza, because one, they're under a blockade by, by sea, sea, land, and air. I had a man put a comment on one of our newscasts. He said that uh, anytime you have a blockade, it's an act of war. And the, so I, as I'm pondering these thoughts, one thing that I could not help but think of is if they're going to let the Palestinians have a state, if let's say that's the inevitable situation, which I am not a supporter of, uh, then why not take the residents that are in Gaza and completely move them over to the West Bank and then level out the city of Gaza and build that as an Israeli uh, seaside town and everything. And then that way, the people are in one location and not split where everybody's saying, well, they got a blockade. Because at that point there, uh, I'm sure as they work out this uh, two-state solution thing, as I'm totally against, but uh, then they're going to be allowing them to get anything they want anyway, which is only detrimental for Israel because we know that Hamas, uh, the, the PA as well, uh, has is, is would like to see the total destruction of Israel. Yes, and you would like to put them into the West Bank. You know, the West Bank is Judea and Samaria, which is biblically Israel, Jew. Jew. In reality, yeah. in reality, that's I would rather see them in Jordan altogether, completely out of Israel. Now that's, and I've stated that many times already, sis, too, because a lot of people don't like that, but I've always stated Israel belongs to Israel. I mean, we're, the Jewish people have only one little tiny strip of land in all the world, and yet they want to take and, and push uh, the Arabs into this part of the land that belongs to Israel. In reality, we should be going further north, up into the Lebanon territory. God gave us not just that little strip that, that where the West Bank is and, and Gaza, but also we crossed the Jordan River. There's so much distance over there. And, to, and, and yes, further north and further east. But, exactly. But Jordan, Jordan actually was um, designed to be a Palestinian country. And, uh, and they didn't want them. That's the same thing that a lot of people have no idea about. And they are about. still being held in other countries as refugees. They have refugee status for over 60 years. My gosh. I mean, this is insane the way it's going. You know, here's the thing. This is the argument I made recently. I said, look, if you take Saudi Arabia, you take Egypt, you take uh, Jordan, Syria, Lebanon, uh, and, and Iraq, Iran, all these countries together... Uh, what do we have, 20, 22 or 23 Arabic nations that are out there, they have the land mass the same size as the United States or thereabouts. Plenty of enough room to absorb Absolutely. the... Absolutely. Whatever we have, what about 6 million Palestinians uh, trying to live in Israel proper? Let them, you know... And some people say you're you're into segregation. Well, in this case here, for the, for the survival of the Jewish people... Even God's a say, you know, he does segregation. When he said to Abraham, when he spoke to Sarah, his wife, he says, take Hagar and her child and send her on her way. I mean, it seemed like a cruel thing, but God knew that it was Isaac that was the promised son, and it was not Ishmael. So. Absolutely. Well, you know, not to get into all of this, but there actually is not a Palestinian people. They are Arabs and, right. and different peoples that came in as workers or settlers that settled within Israel, they are the original settlers here. The people here, the indigenous population, they are the Jews. Go ahead. 
Okay, so this terrible anti-Semitism or pro-Hamas, pro-Palestinian, pro-Gaza, anti-Israel, anti-Jew that's going all over this world is, um, Israel sees that and we have been fighting this for quite a while, but it is so bad. It is firing now. And in Paris, you know, there was um, some nights ago, there was what they're comparing to Kristallnacht that I believe was in the late 30s, 38. Yeah, 38. Um, the smashing of the, the windows and, and coming against Jewish businesses. I mean, we are repeating history here. And they're, they're, the Jewish people are still embedded in these countries and believing, but we're French, but we're German, but we're Swiss, and we're British, and we're American. It can't happen here. And it looks like we're still in that numb area. Our eyes are opening a little bit. But unfortunately, the time back then when our eyes were completely open was when we were not allowed to escape. There was no escaping anymore. Uh, That's right. But, but you know, through all of that pain and disaster, the state of Israel was born. Let's not have it be so painful this time. If, if you're Jewish and you're seeing this happening, start to uproot yourself Make yourself more familiar with Israel. It is your land. It's your country. It's a blessing here. Would you prefer dying at the hands of haters and maybe even Islamic haters that would chop your head off, mutilate you, have you convert? Or would you prefer possibly living and maybe dying at, uh, from a missile strike? And um, not many die from missile strikes, and actually there could be really mass missiles come in here someday, and that would be frightening, but we're in the land of Israel. You're going to die one day, and it's better That's not right. to be pursued, pursued by an enemy that is within walking distance around you. They're surrounding you in these countries, and just living inside of your border in your own country and building it and securing it for yourself. I think that is a better life. Absolutely. And and one thing, sis, let me just say in regards to the anti-Semitism on the rise around the, the world, um, there I'm actually, in, I'll have to end up including this interview as well, not only with Lorica Does More, but there's also another gentleman who is part of the, was part of the United States government here that has inside information on what the United States government is intending on doing. And one of the things that they're intending on doing, and I'll have him on our news so, so that people can get the confirmation of this, is the United States, once Israel gets under a major assault, if they get into a multinational, uh, multi-nation battle, uh, or if they deal with a strike on Iran, uh, the United States has already has plans that they will close uh, traffic for Jews to go out. And if Jewish people try to leave the United States, they will be arrested at the airport. If they try to send money into Israel to help in any way, they will be arrested for this as well. Um, reasoning of the government doing that? From what it looks like as of right now, the United States has become under an asymmetrical uh, warfare here, and that was by uh, Zach Taylor. It was one of his words that he mentioned. He is a, a retired Border Patrol officer out of Texas, and uh, Zach said, this is why our borders are open in Texas and, uh, and all across the whole border, Arizona, New Mexico, and California. And this huge mass of influx of, of people coming in, not just Mexico, but Honduras and other countries down there, as well, we're only seeing, as, as Zach says, you're only seeing 6%. What you're seeing on the news is only 6% of those people crossing the border. And he said that they know even the Border Patrol officers are not, they're not allowed to get ammunition until 2015, and now they're only allowed to carry just a small number of rounds. He said they're, they're disarming the border people so that they cannot defend the nation. Well, that's it's opening it up. Asking, what is the reason to detain the Jews? <laughs> that's a good question. It, 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 I mean, there has to be, they have to make up some, some type oh, of reason, like humanitarian reason. Here, or, here's where it comes from. Maybe the Jewish people are a threat. 
The Jewish people would be a threat in that case there because you have to remember, if Israel goes into a war and the United States does not agree with it, then Israel could end up finding the United States no longer an ally but an enemy. It's just like when the United States uh, went to war with Japan. When they went to war with Japan, they rounded up all the Japanese in the United States and they put them into concentration camps. This exact same thing that would happen here because the United States' mentality of thinking, especially since we have Barack Obama as the president of the United States, who has in essence brought in uh, a huge number of Muslim Brotherhood uh, people in his cabinet. Uh, and so therefore, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a uh, government waiting for disaster. And about the only person in politics in this country here that is standing up for, for, for Israel is Ted Cruz. Senator Ted Cruz is the only one that I've actually seen that has the, 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 uh, the nerve to stand up and voice a true, um, genuine, heartfelt stand for Israel regardless. Exactly. That's exactly right. But now, the, the thing that kind of concerned me, though, is Mayor Bloomberg, he comes in, former Mayor Bloomberg of New York City, comes into Israel, and um, we know Wolf Blitzer on CNN, he was interviewing him, and it really kind of troubled me. At first, I was really proud of uh, Mayor Bloomberg. He's standing up for Israel, showing that it's safe to fly into Israel. They shouldn't close the airports. But the moment Wolf Blitzer mentions the possibility that this could be a political move of, of, uh, with the United States in order to force Israel into uh, conceding to their demands, yes. Mayor Bloomberg goes off on Wolf Blitzer. And he says, you know, he's, he, I was appalled at what I was hearing. He's, he's just, he, can, he accuses Wolf Blitzer of, of, Oh, what was it? It was like demoralizing the United States. He said, I am a, he said, I'm ashamed and I'm appalled that you would even ask me this type of question. And I'm like, he, he's trying to, he's playing politics. He wants to be the great American, but yet the Jewish supporter. And I, that's why I prefer Ted Cruz in the way he stands. He's standing for Israel no matter what. And I, and I really, I don't know him that well. Uh, I'm going to try to see if we can't get him on here with us here because I really appreciate that honest passion for the Jewish people, especially since we have hardly any friends. I mean, I think the Czech Republic, their prime minister, and also the Canadian prime minister are supportive of Israel as well. Uh, no, and India is becoming very supportive. They have a new president, and they are very supportive. India. Wow, that is nice. You know, we have a lot of people listen to uh, the broadcast here from India. So God bless all of you guys in India, So and sisters as well. Uh, but uh, I also say, say a, a few other little things sure, that sure. don't know. Um, before, uh, okay, I, I think I believe it was before the the ground troops went in. Um, Erodigen, I think that's his, I can't pronounce his name from Turkey. Um, he actually spoke in public um, and said that the Israelis are acting worse than Hitler. Um, the Turkish prime minister, and and he was just being very cruel to the Jewish people. And we have had open uh, flights to Turkey, and a lot of Israelis go. I've been there twice, I think. I've been there twice myself through Turkey. So a lot of Israelis were fearful of going to Turkey. They had already purchased their tickets, and the travel travel agencies here would not allow them refunds. So many, many continued and they flew to Turkey. Now that there's this embargo boycott on um, the flights coming into Israel, there are thousands of Jews stuck in Turkey. Oh my this God. doesn't get on the news. Also, the flights coming from America um, into Israel, they were diverted to different including France. I'm sorry. That's okay. I don't know what's causing the noise. But okay, go ahead and try again. We got go ahead and go right back to the part about France. There are there were many airlines that were diverted so as not to come into Israel and taken to the Jewish people that were coming here to Israel were diverted to France where you know there's rampant anti-Semitism there. Yes. Um, in Turkey, they were screamed at at the airport that they couldn't stay there at the airport. They need to go to a hotel. Now, these are families. 
and there's a lot of them are still stuck. Um, Israel's trying to get them in, but Israel is not allowed now to fly into Turkey, so they need to be rerouted, like a flight going into Cyprus or to Greece, and then Israel can pick them up from those countries. These are things that nobody hears about. Uh, another thing is today, more rockets were flo were thrown onto the Tel Aviv Petah Tikva area, wow. which I can understand how the the flights, the airlines or the FDA would be fearful. But we are taking these missiles out, and they do. The FDA allows FAA American flights to go over other countries that are mixed up with wars. Right. But many Israelis believe this is a total boycott. And Netanyahu himself had spoken to, I believe, Kerry when he was here trying to make ceasefire. You can't make a ceasefire with people that are sworn to hate you. They want to kill us. No. He was he was asking Kerry, please take this blockade off. It's hurting Israel. They just I, I know that some have opened. There's some like British airline, British Airways. They they never stopped flying. There are other flights, other companies that did not uh, stop flying into Ben Gurion, which is awesome, perfect, excellent. But there are Scandinavian Airlines, Swiss, French, um, Turkish, American Airlines, uh, U.S. Air, Delta, and um, other countries that had stopped. And there's nothing, nothing fearful about coming into Israel. Another thing is tonight there have been awful riots in Jerusalem, in the streets of Jerusalem. Hundreds of Muslim protesters in the streets. There, there have been wounded, even police officers wounded. And I believe it is because it is the last night of Ramadan. So it's some special evening that they're having and rioting. My gosh. You know, there was, um, well, let me just say, too, like you said, on the FAA, T Senator Ted Cruz even was the only person that had the gumption in the United States uh, to stand up and say that it was a political movement on, on the United States government uh, to force Israel into accepting what they wanted. But as you said, too, sis, you, you cannot, Israel cannot stop the campaign. If Israel does not go in there and totally disarm uh, Hamas, you know, then there, there will be no peace because they will never stop flying the rockets into Israel. And God forbid if Hezbollah for some reason decides to get in, into this uh, charade as well. But if, if, to me, if Hezbollah gets involved into this, the best thing for Israel to do is not so much a ground invasion, but to use a lot heavier bombs on them and just start taking out everything. Because unfortunately... Yeah, it, it is sad. We, we see children and, and, and women that die in these conflicts when that happens, but uh, I cannot help but think that when, when Hashem told us as a nation, when Joshua went in there, you know, that we were to wipe out all the inhabitants because this is what we would face if we don't. And we're seeing that. Uh, you know, the Jewish people are seeing that. And I know the world looks at that as, you know, we're inhumane in, in the process that Israel has to go about. Uh, but, but it must be done. And, and let me just... Uh, really encourage another issue here as you guys listen to sister amy uh she treats out of israel speak about the jewish people that this is your homeland you should come home you know i, I can't help but wonder if the pressure that is happening around the world right now on the jewish people isn't a way that hashem himself is allowing that pressure to come to force us back to our homeland where we belong and if the if the people would come home then we could unite as a much greater nation. And of course, we know that there's a lot of prophetic things uh, that would be fulfilled, but we could discuss that on uh, on one of our talk forums that we're setting up here uh, into the into that area there. But uh, it, it's, it's, it's just a mess. Uh, and the mess is not Israel. The mess is with the Arabic peoples that are in Israel. And the only way, I know that... Uh, uh, Naftali Bennett has made the suggestion that uh, not just himself, there's others as well, annex Gaza. To me, they, when he to not only just annex it, let them go home to their own people in the other countries, whether it be Jordan, Syria, or whatever the case may be. In fact, Syria could use a lot of help rebuilding their nation when they get through with their war. 
So it'd be a great place for them all. Right. Well, you know, going going back to um, having to use more heavier uh, artillery or, or or military, just going it. Is, the Israeli people, we are using kids, kid gloves in there, just being so careful at the expense of our own soldiers, <clears throat> unfortunately. Yes. Uh, soldiers are looking for backup from the, from the Air Force, and the Air Force is not necessarily giving them backup all the time because of the... the um, threat of possibly killing civilians, but then if our military is not given back up on the ground, then our own soldiers are killed. And I had just uh, Thursday night, or just a couple nights ago, wasn't Thursday, sorry, a couple nights ago, I had been to a cemetery here for a lone soldier, Sean Carmelli. Uh, 20,000 people showed up. Wow. Uh, yesterday, a Another lone soldier from America, Car Sean was American from Texas yes. and Israeli, and another one, Max Steinberg, buried in Jerusalem. 30,000 people showed up to his. We are, we, are, we are one as a people standing. 70% of the Israeli public do not want a ceasefire. Because we know we're just going to go through this again and again and again. That's right. We're going to ceasefire. They're going to build it up. They're going to make it worse. It gets worse every time. We need to take care of our people first. Annexing the West Bank and not giving it to them. Not allowing these so-called Palestinians to come in. This is our land that was promised to us. We need to act, annex it for ourselves. Yes, many people will die, unfortunately, or they could just leave. Uh, I don't see, I, I really don't see another solution. I agree. I agree 100%. Sis. It, it, it is the only solution. Um, he, he's okay. He's okay. It, it is the, it is the, whoop. <laughs> it's the only solution that Israel has at this point. And I, let me just, one thing in closing, let me just state that the reason why there is such a battle on the Palestinian side in the world being against Israel in this battle as well is because there is natural gas that's been discovered off of the coast of Israel. There is oil reserves that have been discovered uh, in Judea and Samaria and those areas there, very large. The world included, and, and I have to throw the Vatican in on this because they certainly are the ones that give the green light for which, which country should be gone to war with, although maybe outwardly they, they don't express that, but, they, but they're the ones doing all this. Um, they don't want Israel to get financially independent. And I know I've heard, and I, I, I'd have to look deeper to be able to confirm it, but I have heard that John Kerry's wife uh, uh, has a, a huge amount of money and there's some type of business in the uh, Palestinians' uh, West Bank there that, sh that she invested like some $2 million into a business there. But that it's, this business, I guess, is only contingent on there being a two-state solution. It's just like with Russia. Vladimir Putin signs a contract for oil to get the, the rights to be able to extract the natural gas uh, on the behalf of the uh, Palestinian Authority. And I'm like... How do you sign a contract with a, with a people that are that are really not a, a state, and yet you're doing it anyway? So who's telling them they're a state? Yes. So on every side, the Israeli people, I mean, we're really seeing biblical. I, I, I hear like Anita Fuentes, and she's saying, you know, um, uh, the news is matching Bible prophecy. And we are seeing right now... Uh, we're seeing these scriptures come that are going to be fulfilled very soon. I mean, Zephaniah, Micah, all these. Israel will be surrounded by all the nations, but this is also the time where not only does God come and fight for his people, uh, and whether that, I mean, look at Micah. Micah chapter 4, God says to Israel, you know, I will turn your hooves into brass. You know, you're going through the travail, but I'm going to turn your hooves into brass. So he's going to give us also the strength to fight as well as intercede on Israel's behalf. And, he, and then he says, then the world will know that I am 
I am Hashem. In fact, Zephaniah clearly tells us that this is when God's, he will restore a pure language that we might be able to call upon the name of Hashem. We won't be saying Hashem anymore. We will actually be able to worship God by his own divine name as the children of Israel did 3,500 years ago. Anyway, sis, do you have any closing comments? Uh, just lift up your heads and know that our redemption is coming near. As, as you said, all of these prophecies are, prophecies are coming to pass. God is a God that keeps his promises, and he promised the land to Israel a lot more than what we already have. Uh, we are a tiny, tiny, tiny little people, and it looks like there's no possibility that we can be victorious and get out of this mess that we're in. But God is not going to um, be a liar. If, if, if he does not stand for Israel, if he does not rise up and help be with us at this time, we could be slaughtered. And that is not good for his name. He has made promises and for his own namesake, he's going to fulfill them. So just look up, our Redeemer is coming very soon.